welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. I hope it's going to be a fairly relaxed, lightweight session today. I'm going to go back and look at something I touched on probably a year and a half ago. Something which was a puzzle to me then, and as I've grown to understand more about the machine and the switches and the various ways the machine works, it's become a puzzle to me again. But this time when we go and look at it, I've got the opportunity to look at it with my little picoscope. And at last, I hope we're going to be able to get to grips with these magical parameters, max and min. Now, at the time, I didn't have my oscilloscope, and it was a bit like hunting for a needle in a haystack. I was able to find some parameters that produced some good results. And first of all, we go back and we'll have a little reprise on the problem that I found, that I was trying to solve. I'm going to give each test square a number and I'm going to write the parameters down here so that I don't bore you with all this information. We can see it on the, uh, we can see it on the results later. Now the read signal is the level of current passing through the tube. And the blue signal is the on-off switch that turns the tube on and off. What we've cut here, if you can see in the light, we've got a square, an internal square, and I've cut the external shape out. So we've got two squares. The first square is done at high speed. And if we look carefully in there, we shall see that the corners are very, very deep. And the cut is very, very shallow. So let's have a look at what that means on the screen here. It, this is almost regard this red line almost like a, a variable resistor and what's actually happened is the variable resistor has set itself to a specific value to allow a certain amount of current to flow through when the tube is switched on and so here we are the blue line the tube is switching on and we've got a constant current flowing through constant power and at the end of that internal square the power switched off it rapidly moved to the second square which is the outside square which had to be cut this was a value of max min 50 percent and this was a max min value of 70 percent so as you can see yeah there is some interference on there but basically we've got a constant current flowing through there now as we saw the power of the cut was not decreasing at any stage during the internal square and what we're looking at here is the cut of the internal square and these are the corners and as you can see because the power did not decrease when it hit the corner but of course the velocity and the speed did decrease because it had to stop to turn the corner and then it had to accelerate up to speed again and then it had to decelerate to stop for the corner and you can see those acceleration and deceleration curves here and when the machine was stopped for the corner look we got a very, very deep burn. The, uh, the industrial metal cutting machines that I'd been used to working with in my previous careers had all got the capability of proportional power against speed control. So as the speed decreased, so the power decreased, so you basically had a constant depth as you ran into each corner. Now, there appears to be no such sophistication on this machine, so I thought at the time. But other people say, well, there are some magic numbers, which I've found, that work. And so I went hunting for those magic numbers. Let's go and see if we can set one of those magic numbers up and see what's actually happening now to the cut. Now, since those early days, I was labouring under the misapprehension, maybe, that the only time that that red line was able to be driven with a variable current was when we had the direct output switch on. And the only time that the direct output switch appears is when we're using scan mode. And that makes sense because the reason why we need variable max and min power is because we're going to be using it for 3D engraving where we want to set one of 256 levels between minimum and maximum power. And so that's how we go about doing 3D engraving. Apart from that, 
there couldn't really be any other function that you'd use it for. Now for this second test we're going to keep the speed at 80 millimetres a second and we're going to set the minimum power to 5% now. Now 5% is not even enough to make the tube fire. This tube does not actually fire until it gets to about about probably eight or nine percent so five percent is actually below the switch on trigger point for the tube but we're going to use five percent and fifty percent maximum the same maximum that we were using just now so we've nearly cured the problem here because look we haven't got a huge dip in the corner We've got steady speed across here and then we've got this gradual deceleration here and it then stops. Now the problem is if you look at this very carefully you can see that it stops before it reaches the corner in the same way that it starts after it's left the corner. Can you see that? Look you can see the previous edge here and there's a gap there and then it, that the power builds up reaches a certain level then it settles down again and goes level so it looks as though the only reason we haven't got this dip here is because we've actually switched the beam off it hasn't just settled down to a controlled level it's physically been switched off and what we're seeing here is probably something to do with the rise and fall time of the beam itself. Now this is slightly different here because we've definitely got a controlled deceleration taking place on here but then it switches off before the corner. Now we're we'll going to look at the aspect of it in a few moments under the microscope to prove that it has actually stopped before the corner but before we do that let's just take a look at the signals above it. We can see here this little splash of blue and this little splash of red where there's a step now that's undoubtedly where the actual program started and we move away from our green square and we rush away at a tremendous rate of knots trying to get to the first corner and in doing so we are accelerating. Now as we're accelerating so what's happening the power is building. It gets to a certain point and all of a sudden the head says ah I've got to slow down for the corner now because I'm going to start cutting in a minute so as the velocity drops off so the power drops off now bearing in mind we haven't switched the tube on yet this is a preemptive power setting that the computer is making and so it gets to the point where it switches the tube on and we've arrived at the corner and of course we've arrived at the corner and the power is down to five percent and then we take off and we've got this steady ramp up here now this is a controlled ramp and one has to assume that it's based on the acceleration factors that are built into the vendor settings because we see that same deceleration taking place here and acceleration taking place here this is not anything to do with the performance of the power supply or the tube this is something that's been forced by the controller and I know that for a fact because when we get to the end of our square we stop and then we have this preemptive setting again for the next phase which is the external square cutting and if we take a look here you can see that from the point at which the cutting stops for the square it immediately jumps up not ramping it immediately jumps up to this new power level preemptive power level so that by the time we switch on at this point here to start cutting the external square we've already got this high 70% power level set this being 50% and this being 5% now here is a microscope picture of the corner the unfinished corner where the power stopped before the corner and started after the corner and I think you can see that is very clear on this picture okay then there's no need for me to go through and describe all this characteristic again because all we need to observe here is that the minimum has now risen to about 10% it's come off the blue line and it's sitting a little bit higher 
But what we just need to observe is that here, virtually we've got a more or less instantaneous rise time away from the corner here. And then we've got this controlled acceleration. We've got a fairly level power along the middle here. If we look at the end here, we see our steady decline in power to match the velocity, more or less. But we get to this point here, which is before the end of the cut, and we see that the power is switched off. And it looks as though that we're relying on the decay time of the power supply itself to actually reach the corner. So this is 10%, which is just about over the switch on point, the trigger point for the tube. OK, now we're at 20% and we're well into the working region for the tube. And as you can see, the benefits of this minimum are sinking very, very fast. So when we move on to 30%, there's virtually no difference between that and 50-50. We shall see that at 40-50. And then we'll jump quickly on to 49-50, just in case there's any problem just before that break point. And there isn't. Now, the one thing that I must mention to you is that out of all of this, Although we might be decreasing the deceleration in a steady manner, the power from this tube is not linear. So we've got all sorts of compound effects taking place as we decrease the power. We haven't got a linear power to speed ratio. So I'll leave you to work out the complexities of how that one might play out. Well, with the aid of the oscilloscope, we've definitely proved that my belief that it was only the direct output switch that switched the power control system on was wrong. And in fact, it's available for cut mode as well. You can set max and min. But I think if we've basically seen, if you set it much above about five, maximum 10% you're wasting your time. It has no effect at all above about 10%. I suppose that's the same lesson that I discovered last time but I didn't realize that it was actually caused by the power being switched on and off. I think I thought it was some sort of response time in the power supply that was if you like we were hunting for a little gap in the system. It was a weakness or a, a loophole that was there but it's not a loophole, it's a real thing, as we've seen. And so, yeah, you can use it, but now you know how to use it, very sparingly and very low. I'm off to get a top up. I'll see you in the next session. Bye for now.